The mayor of Tybee Island says that they dodged a major bullet. They were diverting traffic and I think still are to a certain extent. You can see metal reinforcement as well. And of course, you can see boarded up doors and windows. A lot of you will remember this as Old Petersburg Road. Very quiet residential area, two lane road. What I'm standing on right now is basically a big sand dune. It's what they've created to kind of help with storm surge. You can see the waves already coming up to where my feet are. It's blue. There are breaks in the clouds. It's almost like nothing even happened here. If you take a look, you can see that traffic camera. That is one of several cameras that captured the suspect's vehicle. Now, from here, the two suspects got out of the vehicle, fled into that wooded area. Huge trees. There's not one tree, but two trees right here. It happened really quick, and when it was over, it was over. But the damage it left behind is written all over Andy Howell's home. And we uh, came upstairs and uh, found a lot of insulation in our main floor and then uh, went outside to find the damage. Trees uprooted, part of the roof gone, insulation sprinkled like snow. I, I knew something had bad happened. It was, a, it was very loud and a lot of, a lot of things were uh, falling and breaking. His home is one of the worst damaged in the Magnolia Plantation neighborhood. A bird's eye view gives you an even better look. We thought it missed us, but we were wrong. Just down the road, debris litters the Knob Hill Farm neighborhood. Most of the big limbs now gone. This can all be fixed. This is nothing. Nobody was injured. That's where we found Linda Childress. She was inside her living room when this pine tree came crashing through her window. Then all of a sudden it was just like noise and just smashing. And that's when I saw, standing in the middle of my living room, I saw the pine tree coming at the windows. The impact crushed a fence, shattered her concrete patio, smashed the air conditioning units, and rattled her nerves. I don't think I stopped shaking for probably 20 minutes. All of this from a storm that was here, then gone. In Columbia County, Brooks Honor on your side. You could say Brian Rust was meant to be an artist. I love to draw. In fact, I love ceramics. It runs in the family. A lot of these things that you do are the public art, they're, they're kind of celebrations of community. His know? current project is a celebration of Augusta's history, and there's no better place for it than right next to the Augusta Canal. I wanted to make a sort of a stone replica of the Petersburg boats. And if you can't figure out what it is up close... It's, it's just going to be a seating area. This is all, this is all uh, repurposed. Brian says, take a look from the top or the bottom. My shortest description of it is it's halfway in between a Petersburg boat and Stonehenge. In fact, when people so, ask what it is, they'll ask what they see. I just say, go stand at either end and then you tell me. So, And then once they see it from the end, they, they recognize that it is a boat. Creating it was kind of like a puzzle. Digging, arranging, and embedding pieces of stone to create the stone boat, inspired by cargo boats that once sailed the canal. So there's kind of a sense of history about it, and it ties back into the canal and its original use, and then this idea of kind of general sense of history. Almost every slab of granite is from Augusta. Some of them were once curbstones that lined the streets. I'm just looking for it to be a place where people can come, they can meet here, you know, like let's meet at the boat. In Augusta, Brooks Honor, on your side. Art can take on so many different forms mm -hmm. and a lot of manual labor. You can mm -hmm. see, I was like, oh, I feel so bad for you. You're uh, like, he was digging in serious and elbow grease in yeah. that heat. Yeah, but you can see it for yourself if you want at the Mill Village Trailhead. That's right behind the Croc Center near the Eve Street Bridge. And the Canal Authority is planning to have kind of a formal unveiling of it mm -hmm. on May 31st, but really cool project. Absolutely. In almost every way, Luke Pickering is living proof of a miracle. The day I'm here by, it's by God I'm here today. I mean, I shouldn't be walking around talking. Seeing him play guitar today is a miracle considering where he was about 10 months ago. I had 20 broken bones. I had a brain injury, so therefore I couldn't do nothing. It was Luke's senior year at Barnwell High School. After a night of drinking, he and a group of friends were in an accident. An accident that killed his best friend and nearly killed him. I mean, I was basically dead. I was in a coma for 14 days throughout, and I couldn't do nothing. I was stuck in a hospital bed. Luke started walking in September and had to relearn almost everything. His recovery is what his doctors say is nothing short of amazing. I talked to him, and they tell me I'm sitting a miracle baby. 
It love me to death. It means even more to him now to be able to share his story, which is what he does every chance he gets. Think about things before you do things because it really does matter. That pain isn't gone. But Luke is using it for something a lot bigger than himself. In Barnwell, Brooks Honor, on your side. He says, think about things before you do things. Yeah, he was a passenger in the car when all this happened. This, we reported on it. Obviously, mm -hmm. we, didn't, we didn't get to the scene, but yeah. um, ever since then, I mean, his recovery story, there's so many little details to it that are just incredible. So he's been kind of going around sharing mm -hmm. his story, basically his testimony mm -hmm. with churches, schools, driver's ed classes. So really, I mean, it's a, a story of triumph.